Madam Presiding Officer, I want to begin by thanking my constituents of Bagatelle Bacolet for allowing me to represent their views and by extension, the views of the people of Tobago. As a woman from a rural community, a woman from Kokowati Trace Mason Hall, I feel extremely proud to stand here and speak as the Secretary for the Division of Food Security, Natural Resources, the Environment and Sustainable Development, and to have as the Secretary for Finance, Trade and the Economy, the Chief Secretary and the Head of the Executive Council of the Tobago House of Assembly, the Honorable Mr. Farley Chavez Augustine. Madam Presiding Officer, I have a crucial mandate today, that is to present and lay in the chamber the justification for the establishment of the institutional structure for the implementation of the tongue and country planning function by the assembly in accordance with the Tobago House of Assembly Act 40, 1996. Madam Presiding Officer, under the THA Act 40, 1996, the THA was assigned responsibility for the Tongue and Country Planning. At the time of passage, according to the Tongue and Country Planning Act of 1960, this meant responsibility to make and implement policy in Tobago for the orderly and progressive development of land in both urban and rural areas and to preserve and improve the amenities thereof for the grant of permission to develop land and for other powers of control over the use of land to confer additional powers in respect of the acquisition and development of land for planning and for purposes connected with the matters aforesaid. Madam Presiding Officer, this was extended to cover marine spaces for aquaculture by the Planning and Facilitation of Development Act of 2014. Further, of relevance to the Tobago House of Assembly, this act created a national planning agency with responsibility to, among other matters, address key elements of the planning function. B, advise the minister in accordance with part A of the second schedule with respect to the framing of development policies referred to in section 5.2 and to ensure consistency and continuity in the implementation of policies adopted by the minister in accordance with parts four, five, six, and seven. C, prepare and keep under review a spatial development strategy for Trinidad and Tobago, herein after referred to as the National Spatial Development Strategy for the purpose of section 18.1. D, develop regulations, standards and practices for building, engineering operations and land development and submit them for the approval of the minister. Madam Presiding Officer, as written, this law does not contemplate removal of the Tobago House of Assembly responsibility for Tongue and Country Planning from the fifth schedule of the THA Act. And under Section 72 of this 2014 Act, the National Planning Agency is required to consult with the Tobago House of Assembly when performing the functions listed as B, C, and D above. Taken together, all of the above laws admit the crucial role that the Tobago House of Assembly must play in the Tongue and Country Planning to support the development of the Tobago economy. Further, Madam Presiding Officer, Tobago is a small island jurisdiction. Its spatial resources are accordingly limited and must be used in an informed way to facilitate orderly development across the island. In light of the fifth schedule of Act 40, 1996, development of the Tobago economy is the responsibility of the Tobago House of Assembly. Implementation of a meaningful development agenda gives rise to an enormous variety of projects as well as population growth, in which, which in turn requires considerable forward thinking to ensure that Tobago evolves as an efficiently used and inviting space for visitors, residents, and businesses alike. Madam Presiding Officer, the use of spatial resources must be segregated and regulated and the growing population accommodated to ensure optimal outcomes, including those related to preservation of the environment for future generations. Therefore, 
as contemplated by Act 40, 1996. All segregation and regulation of use of Tobago spatial resources should be properly done by the Tobago House of Assembly to enable adequate reflection of the local facts, the local development agenda, agenda as well as the wishes of its stakeholders and their views about what is to be done with Tobago's assets. The responsibility of the Tobago House of Assembly, Madam Presiding Officer. Attention should be drawn to the reading of Section 25.1 of the THA Act, as allowing the THA to make and implement policy on spatial resource use without prejudice to Section 75.1 of the Constitution. The THA Act contains specific mechanisms for the Cabinet to ascertain that the THA actions on tongue and country planning do not prejudice its responsibilities. And it also allows the THA to institute inclusive policy making mechanisms to capture the will of the people of Tobago. Continuation of the somewhat recent practice of uninformed external decisions about the use of Tobago's spatial resources risks significant consequential vulnerability to the damaging effects of climate change, fire hazards, and flooding. Madam Presiding Officer, the evidence of the last 20 years is that there is also the risk of inadequately located infrastructure and even housing settlements on precious, scarce, fertile agricultural land in an environment in which food security is emerging as a matter of priority. Madam Presiding Officer, the associated lack of sustainability then poses a serious threat to successful implementation of Tobago's development agenda, especially hindering the growth of its population and economy, as well as that of the nation. Embrace of the active responsibility for all elements of tongue and country planning by the Tobago House of Assembly, as envisaged under Act 40, 1996, allows locally informed and futuristic management of Tobago's ecological diversity its cultural and historical heritage and natural resources, ensuring that these will be around for future residents and visitors to appreciate and enjoy. Division's responsibility. Madam Presiding Officer, the segregation and regulation of use of Tobago spatial resources must be done by a division of the Tobago House of Assembly that has a panoramic view of modern issues such as increased population growth, climate change, and unsustainable development, and can develop and deploy public policy as an instrument that enables adequate equity and balance in the use of spatial resources and infrastructure for development while conserving Tobago's attractive environment for use by future generations. The division must deploy this panoramic perspective to analyze use of Tobago's spatial resources, included in rural areas as a dynamic process, and then formulate plans for the optimal utilization of those spatial resources in the development process consistent with environmental requirements and socioeconomic trends. Given the configuration of its current responsibilities, the ideal division to manage this function of tongue and country planning seems to be the division of food security, natural resources, the environment, and sustainable development. By design, Madam Presiding Officer, the division must deploy effective scientific methods to monitor and optimize the spatial use of land and other natural resources by Tobago's agricultural systems and ensure environmental sustainability while achieving food security. The synergies with tongue and country planning are immediately clear. Modern spatial use analysis involves professional application of scientific methods with large data sets that document the dynamic effects of public policy interventions. These methods identify resulting patterns related to demographic, geographic, and economic data. For example, the effects of policy on the following would normally be considered, such as population size, spatial distribution of settlements, special spaces such as community parks, playgrounds, and other public infrastructure, 
water sources and supplies, transportation patterns, land and soil quality and related food security needs and production patterns, premium carbon reducing energy supply potential, healthcare and social services, tourism applications and the changing impact of land use. These are the same patterns that are already being monitored by the Division of Food Security, Natural Resources, the Environment and Sustainable Development as it seeks to manage its current functions effectively. Madam Presiding Officer, important among the modern scientific methods used to predict the evolution of use of spatial resources is the geographical, the geographical Information System, GIS, with built-in predictive analytics that the Division of Food Security, Natural Resources, the Environment, and Sustainable Development is already moving to use in its current functions. The GIS will allow the division to model and monitor short-term issues such as the movement of people in a geographical space and long-term issues such as agricultural and commercial applications of land and their effects on the development of the society, economy, and the environment. A key synergy will be achieved through this division's needed data collection efforts. As the division conducts appropriate censuses, appropriate censuses of agriculture, other enterprises can also be covered. And the GIS can be populated with data that allow the THA to predict the changing demographics and growth of Tobago's population as it implements its development agenda. In turn, Appropriate spatial planning will allow the THA to prepare for the predicted changes by ensuring access to high quality and yet affordable housing. Location of the responsibility in the Division of Food Security, Natural Resources, the Environment and Sustainable Development is clearly a win-win proposition for the people of Tobago. Put summarily, because of the wide range of scientific applications that are needed and well aligned to its current responsibilities, the ideal division to manage this function of the town and country planning in Tobago seems to be the division of food security, natural resources, the environment, and sustainable development. Fundamental questions and their answers. Madam Presiding Officer, as Tobago pursues its development agenda, fundamental questions will arise about our approach to the optimal use of our geographical space. Among these are the following. How should residential property values across Tobago's communities be optimized and preserved? What are the incompatible activities and what limits should be placed on them, say building size, height, breadth, depth, and where can they take place? What spatial and technological rules about housing, industrialized tourism, and retailing activities are needed to protect Tobago from excessive despoilment and enable achievement of its sustainability goals? How should residential construction be related to traffic circulation, bulk and density levels, congestion and crime, given the growing need for efficient transportation of goods, resources, and people? How should the basic needs of water, energy, and economic growth be balanced against the need for environmental conservation and the active reduction in carbon dioxide and methane emissions? How should the existing historical and cultural heritage be preserved as the built environment changes to enable successful economic development in Tobago? In short, what are the spatial and environmental requirements of Tobago's development plan? And what should be the accompanying zoning codes and regulations that will achieve the desired outcomes? The bottom-up approach of the Division of Food Security, Natural Resources, the Environment, and Sustainable Development. Traditionally, traditionally Madam Presiding Officer, left under the control of the ministry based in Trinidad, these questions were answered using a top-down approach as experts determine the best use of spatial resources considering efficiency, sanitation, protection, and use of the environment and the effects of specific use patterns on the social and economic activities of society. However, under the Tobago House of Assembly, 
and the Division of Food Security, Natural Resources, the Environment, and Sustainable Development, priority emphasis would be placed on the interests, health, and well-being of residents, businesses, and communities while achieving environmental sustainability in line with the Sustainable Development Goals. Here, Madam Presiding Officer, it is critical to observe that, consistent with its responsibilities, spatial planning under the Division of Food Security, Natural Resources, the Environment, and Sustainable Development would seek to ensure ecological sustainability by prohibiting actions that will destroy the habitats of wildlife, even as Tobago moves to raise the productivity of agriculture to increase food security. Crucially, the division is already adopting an approach to environmental sustainability that involves switching to energy systems that minimize carbon and methane emissions and switching to reliable, energy efficient and widely available public transportation systems. Environmentally sustainable use of spatial resources will also be water sensitive and involve technological upgrades designed to minimize water waste in agricultural and other uses. Madam Presiding Officer, Tobago and its village communities have their own objectives when it comes to spatial resource use and appropriately so. Madam Presiding Officer, the most urgent concerns of our village communities are sustainability, water reliability and sensitivity, community survival and renewal, climate change, cultural and historical heritage, and conservation. The ecologies, populations, community economies, and historical heritage of Tobago's village communities are all very unique. Thus, it is critical that the Tobago House of Assembly exercise its responsibility to collaborate with Tobago's village communities to ensure that their various spatial resource use, desires, and requirements are met. Madam Presiding Officer, from my extensive interactions with them as a former THA scientist, and in my brief stint as a secretary so far, I can tell you that the Tobago's village communities are likely to argue stoutly for the preservation of their historical heritage sites, which in turn represents a case for preservation and even creation of inviting public spaces and trails and for the promotion of social cohesion. These issues now also make it clearer that the spatial use questions must be answered and spatial use patterns determined, guided by a single model achievement of desirable outcomes, guiding the achievement of desirable outcomes. One that also involves residents who are most likely to be affected by change in the rate of development in Tobago. The concept of participatory spatial planning is also important here since it reflects the degree of democracy Tobagonians can enjoy in their own communities. Madam Presiding Officer, spatial planning in Tobago should not be autocratic and top-down. Within a participatory framework, the role of the town and country planner changes from that of solely an expert to also that of a collaborator and mediator between different groups of stakeholders in each village community. To close, Madam Presiding Officer, the Tobago House of Assembly and the Division of Food Security, Natural Resources, the Environment, and Sustainable Development are fully committed to this approach, and the division is already moving to, de to deploy it to improve its delivery of its mandated services to the people of Tobago within the framework of the development strategy that is currently being specified. Madam Presiding Officer, thank you for the opportunity to present this case on, be on behalf of my constituents of Bagatelle Bacolet and by extension, the people of Tobago.